Hi, I'm Brittany from Android Pit, and I'm here to tell you about Android Wear 2.0. The final version of this software is due to be released on February 9th. Today we have a Huawei watch running Android Wear 2.0 developer preview, but this software can also be run on the LG Watch Urbane 2. Installing the developer preview is relatively easy, almost the same as installing a Nexus factory image. The overall process only takes a few minutes and resets the watch to factory settings. Even just after the initial setup, you'll notice that Android Wear 2.0 is quite different to its predecessor. With Android Wear 2.0, Google is trying to make smartwatches less dependent on being connected to a smartphone. This will be especially useful for iPhone users since they've so far had little added value from Android Wear powered watches. Why? The most important notification interface isn't really compatible with iOS, so the Huawei Watch and others can offer relatively few advantages to users who link them to Apple devices. Android Wear 2.0, on the other hand, turns these watches into self-contained devices. Some of the older Android Wear devices already have the important components to allow them to operate independently, like Wi-Fi, GPS, a microphone, and loudspeakers. That being said, the previous software was like a ball and chain for these wearables. New features were either included with the updates for older Android Wear versions at a snail's pace, or not at all. Additionally, their functionality was moderate at best. To install any new apps, you would first need to grab your smartphone to do it, but not anymore. For the first time ever, you can now install apps on your smartwatch without the help of your smartphone. Watch dials, chat apps, and some small games can be directly downloaded to your device. One of the best features to come out of the 2.0 update is the new, very beautiful app drawer. It shows you your recently opened apps, your favorites, and then all of the other smartwatch apps in alphabetical order. Google Assistant is also included in this update, a perk which until now had been reserved only for Pixel owners. At the moment, it does have a tendency to behave a little awkwardly and misses quite a few inputs, but thanks to machine learning, it's expected to improve over time. Compared to its predecessor, the user interface for Android Wear 2.0 has improved massively. This is the long-awaited general overhaul where all of the criticisms which were thrown at the 2014 version have been addressed. The most important innovation, in my opinion, is the data-driven watch dials. Google has installed two so-called elements dials, each of which provides four locations for your choice of data. Behind these data items is a new programming interface, the so-called Complications API. The fields display data which can originate from either an app on the smartphone or on the smartwatch. If you tap on one of these fields, you'll be able to access the app or start an action on your smartphone. From a user perspective, I can imagine a variety of reasons why I would tailor the settings on my smartwatch. For work, I would be able to see events, contacts, notifications, and a shortcut to my inbox. For sport and exercise, I can use the heart rate monitor, step counter, and give myself easy access to the timer and smartwatch. The ability to change your favorite smartwatch styles is so simple with Android Wear 2.0 that you'll never have an issue accessing your schedule or straightforward tasks like reading the time. Android Wear 2.0 has also greatly improved the speed for its settings and notifications. Like smartphones powered with Android Nougat, the notifications are now actionable. You can answer messages instantly and just as quickly archive them. A small keyboard helps with replying to notifications, and in the preview, we managed to do this with a swipe. The Android Wear 2.0 update allows smartwatches to be both simple and useful. It breathes new life into older smartwatches and will be even better with more powerful newer smartwatches and software optimizations. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again in the next video.